Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is a weekly update and I have five books to talk to you about today that I've finished since last time. So before we get started, leave some sort of knight or horse or sword emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. And like always, we'll move from the lowest to the highest rated. So the first book I'll talk about today is a three star book and that's Hide by Craig Russell. So I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley and this comes out September 28th. So I would describe this as like, it's like an adult murder mystery with gothic tones to it. So we follow Edward Hyde, who has a gift or a curse where he sees two realities. One of these is real and the other is this dream world state. So there are some murders in Victorian Edinburgh that mimic the ancient Celtic threefold death ritual. So as Hyde investigates, he gets entangled in occultism and dark scheming. I was really looking forward to this after liking Craig Russell's previous gothic thriller, The Devil Aspect. I think I read that last year. It was really great. But I don't think this was quite as good as The Devil Aspect. It does, however, have a you know nice gothic tone to it. And I liked this you know, slight connection that we have with Robert Louis Stevenson. The story of Jekyll and Hyde is pretty well known. And I liked how this wasn't really an exact retelling of it, but had nods to this story. So I think the pacing was all right overall. It was a bit slow to start because it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what's going on, but I think it does pick up by the end. Generally, I think the mystery of these murders was all right, but I kind of wish it had just gone in a different direction, perhaps I think more like the devil aspect. We do also have some involvement of Celtic folklore and mythology, and I absolutely loved this. And, you know, I think I would have preferred for the book to lean a little bit more heavily into this, and that kind of, you know, gets back to this mystery. Like, I kind of just wish we had done more, <laughs> like, mythology-related things. But, you know, we, that's, that's fine. Obviously, it does deal with an idea of this alter ego, you know, being being Hyde here, but I thought this was really interesting to explore. I think this is a really fascinating idea, and I thought this was done pretty well. I certainly didn't predict everything that happened here, so the mystery kept me guessing. Hyde is a police captain in this book, and he's in charge of investigating these murders, but he has this condition where he has these mysterious gaps in his memory, and he goes into this other world where he basically hallucinates things that are not there. So I was certainly intrigued by this idea, but I'm not sure how satisfied I am necessarily with the answers that we get. In terms of some of the other characters that come up, Callie Burr was probably my favorite. She's a female doctor and I really liked her. She's kind of looked down on because, you know, at the time there's not a lot of female physicians and so they're kind of like, oh, you know, what is she doing here? But she's really smart and helpful and I really liked seeing her interact with Hyde. So we do have some more menacing people who come up and who deal a lot with the occult aspects of this book. And I think they were interesting enough, but I just kind of wanted more from them in general. So I thought this was, you know, enjoyable enough overall. I do wish it had been more like the devil aspect and I'm, you know, I definitely prefer the devil aspect to this. But if you're looking for like a nice gothic mystery, especially, you know, with October coming up, then perhaps this would be a good one to check out. We'll move to three and a half star books and the first one I'll talk about here is Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. So I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley and this comes out September 28th. So this is adult horror and we follow Andrew and Eddie who were best friends who did everything together until Eddie leaves Andrew behind to go to Vanderbilt for grad school. Six months later, though, right before Andrew is set to join him, Eddie dies of apparent suicide, leaving Andrew with a roommate he doesn't know, friends he didn't ask for, and a phantom with bleeding wrists. So Andrew searches for the truth and uncovers lies, secrets, and a blood-soaked family history. So this was a mixed experience for me. It was not as good as I had hoped for. I think the main thing for me was that the pacing was honestly a major struggle. Like, the beginning was very slow and confusing though it definitely does pick up towards the end and gets considerably better, but I think in general it felt like it took way too long for me to get to the things that I really wanted to know or to a part where, you know, things start advancing the plot overall. The beginning and the middle, I would say, I had no idea where this was really headed and I just didn't really enjoy myself all that much. But by the end, I think the pacing, the character development, and the overall like interest level that I had in this was just so much better. This is a book where most of it, like in the beginning, was probably like a two star for me, honestly, but then I really loved what happened at the end. That was exactly what I wanted. But I do just kind of wish these elements, you know, that especially worked well for me in the ending, had been a little bit more evenly spread out throughout the book because it did make for an uneven reading experience. 
I think this would have been, like I said, phenomenal had it all been consistently like it was told at the end. So we do have some Fast and the Furious moments, especially in the beginning, which like was kind of interesting because I, I do enjoy those movies, but it turns out I that doesn't necessarily translate to me enjoying reading about that in book form. So there was a lot of that. I think that's going to be very hit or miss for people. But moving on, I do really like the Southern Gothic tone of the book and getting some like folklore elements. And I could have used more of this throughout. I think that's really fascinating. And certainly living in the South myself, like I think that's super cool and definitely want to know more about it. The horror elements and just generally speaking, I think this book is a more of a slow burn. So we do have some really creepy scenes, especially with this phantom following Andrew. And I thought these were really well done. But again, I could have used more of it. This book does touch on heavy themes such as racism, homophobia, grief, and loss, so there are some content warnings for that, but we also have some drug and alcohol abuse, and I will say this got to be a bit much for me to read about at times, and like I didn't particularly enjoy it, so there are content warnings for that as well. The characters were also not super likable, especially at the beginning. Like I honestly disliked Andrew for most of the book because he's selfish and rude and like this, I think, is at least in part due to, you know, what he's going through with these, this loss and handling his grief. So, like, that's kind of understandable, but at the same time, I just didn't particularly enjoy reading about him. However, I will say he does have some really fabulous character growth with understanding himself more and actually opening up to people. And his journey, particularly at the end, was fabulous to read about. Eddie honestly does not seem that great. He kind of seems like a jerk. And I never really liked him because I honestly think that he's rather selfish and toxic. We have Riley and Sam as well, and they're kind of hard to get a read on initially, but I grew to like them more, especially as we get to know them. Riley, I think, seems sweet and helpful overall, but Sam is more of like this protective type. We have several complicated relationships here, including some very toxic ones. So there are some like polyamorous dynamics. We have characters who haven't really admitted even to themselves that they might be gay. So I think there's a lot of exploration of this and just the struggle of overcoming internalized biases. So overall, this was a kind of mixed experience for me in terms of the reading, especially at the beginning. But again, I'm glad that I stuck with it because it ultimately did improve quite a bit at the end. I would still recommend this book, but do be aware, like if you are also struggling in the beginning like me, that it does pick up considerably. So the other three and a half star book I'll talk about today is Reign of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. So this is a YA fantasy and it's set in a kingdom that's ruled by the dead. So necromancers are tasked to raise the nobles, but this comes with a cost. The dead must remain shrouded because if they're seen, they transform into monsters known as shades. So recently there's been an uptick in shade attacks and our characters discover that there's a conspiracy where someone is intentionally creating these shades. So I thought this was enjoyable overall. The pacing is pretty consistently good and it did keep me interested throughout the whole book. I particularly liked the society and world, world building here. So the magic is determined by someone's eye color. So for instance, blue eyes mean that you're a necromancer, green mean that you're a beast master, gray, you're a weather mage, you know, etc. So I thought this was a really cool idea that I don't think I've seen before. And admittedly, like this could have used some more development and explanation, but I really liked this idea. So I guess I would be a necromancer. So that's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> so I thought this was an interesting world where, you know, with the, the dead ruling, they're very insistent that nothing changed, so we end up having the same king who was ruled for centuries, among other things. I also really like this idea that the dead could become monsters, so it's very much like a there's a cost to raising them, and I, we get to explore the idea of whether or not it's really worth it. So the necromancers obviously play a huge role in society, but perhaps not everyone is happy with their abilities. I will say I did think this mystery and conspiracy was pretty easy to predict who the villain was, but I actually feel more conflicted than I expected about the villain's motivations because like, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. In terms of the characters, I thought Odessa, our main character, was pretty enjoyable to follow. She's a necromancer and she's known as the Sparrow, so she's got this special ability to easily find gates that enter and leave the realms of the dead. So she does go through some really difficult times here with loss where she struggles to manage her grief and deals with addiction. So this can be tough to read about at times, but I felt like this was developed in a way where we could really understand where she's coming from. She's also faced with some harsh truths about her role in society and whether she's believes that she's really doing the right thing. 
there's definitely more to her story so I am certainly looking forward to the next book and you know finding out where what happens next she is also bisexual so I will admit that I was kind of meh on the established relationship that opens up the book but I'm much more interested in the developing relationship I will say I think some of the relationships that happen in this book are complicated and sometimes a bit rushed even if I do ultimately like where they're headed in terms of some of the other characters we have Valoria who's a princess and I love that she's an inventor she seems like she's a really cool character but she's not as present in this book as I'd necessarily like so I'm hoping that we get to see her more in the second book we also have Meredy, who's a Beastmaster, and she's kind of awesome. I think she's pretty tough, and she has a bear companion, who I absolutely love. So I just thought she was a really fun side character, and I hope to see her more. I think that she also kind of provides a st another side to handling grief, and I think that she and Odessa kind of help each other become stronger and help each other process their losses. We do have some other friends along the way, and I generally like them, but we don't get to see them a ton so again hoping that we get to see them more in the second book so overall i thought this was a really fun book and i certainly want to continue it so yeah would definitely recommend it if you're interested in that premise so now we'll jump up to a four star book and that's gawain by jp harker so i buddy read this with cat from Bruce and reviews and i did receive this for review from james so this is an adult fantasy where we follow a young gawain as he embarks on his first test as a future knight of the round table he travels north to face a new enemy after accepting a, a challenge at Beltane, but he's unaware that the Picts, led by a tribal chief, Mary, are massing for an attack on his father's kingdom. So I generally had a good time with this. I'm not surprised. I've really enjoyed, you know, the, the Caledon saga up there by, by J.P. Harker. I wasn't super familiar with Gawain's background, aside from like vaguely knowing that there's something to do with the Green Man or the Green Knight. I don't even know if that's the same character and like Kat and I were kind of talking about this, like we think it is, but those are used interchangeably, but like still don't really know. <laughs> but anyway, so I definitely enjoyed getting this origin story for Gawain and you know, exploring things that I don't necessarily know about like the lore of Camelot. So I feel like James has really matured in his writing. I think this is faster paced than the Caledon books but it is you know considerably shorter so I will admit that I did want some more kind of towards the end but this could be due to that I'm you know kind of comparing it to the Caledon books where you know there's a lot of time to really develop things and kind of explore aftermath and like have these really epic battles and like there are epic battles here but I think this could also be in part due to just not being super familiar with the story of Gwen. It is entirely possible that a particular battle is as short as it was here. I can definitely see some of those similarities between this and the Caledon Saga, which makes sense because the Caledon Saga is kind of inspired by like Celts versus Romans. So there's obviously a lot of shared inspiration, but this was really cool and like it's fun to pick out little tidbits here. So for example, some of our characters shout the war gods names and some of them, some of these gods names are very similar to what comes up in Caledon. So it's like fun little Easter eggs where I was like, oh, I bet this is like a shared inspiration. So I, I thought this was just super fun to see. As always, the battle scenes are just excellent. They are so well described and super exciting. I can really picture what's going on. And unsurprisingly, not everybody is safe. So it makes it feel a lot more realistic. And I think it just keeps things much more exciting. Like, like at some point in this book, I was kind of like, hmm, I feel like someone's about to die. So yeah, I guess I guess the Caledon books have made me like deeply suspicious. But <laughs> like, who's going to make it through the books? But we also do have some really nice downtime here with things like the celebration at Beltane. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's really cool to see this and learn about it. But we also get some really funny moments with this particular setting. Of course, there are also some surprises along the way. <laughs> and I feel like that is a common thread throughout all of his books. And I just really enjoy this. In terms of our characters, with Gawain, we first kind of see him as this boy who wants to impress a girl with a kind of dumb idea that he thinks is great. So over the book, I think he matures a lot and we get to see glimpses of the knight that he'll become. While he does make some mistakes and acts too hastily at times, I think he does have a good heart and tries to act nobly. He's kind of caught between two worlds as well with like worshiping the traditional gods of his people and, and Christianity. So I feel like this is a conflict that we'll see in future books as well. In terms of the other characters, we have Helen, who is his lady friend, and she seems kind but also fierce and she gets to have some really great moments that I just absolutely loved. 
We also have Gawain's brothers, Gareth, who seems really sweet, and Gaharis, who's honestly kind of a dick. <laughs> I did not really like him, but ultimately both of his brothers are there for him. We also have Mab, who is the best doggo, but also, of course, we need to mention Mary, who is on the other side of things, and so she, I, I just really liked her. She's very intelligent and fierce, and I liked seeing a strong female leader. I really enjoyed her point of view, and I think this really helps with the story because it kind of just brings everything together. We run into some familiar faces from Arthurian legend along the way, and I'm very curious to see what they'll do next. So. Overall, I definitely had a good time with this, and I can't wait for the other night's books. Like, I think the overall plan was to do a few of these origin stories, and then, like, kind of, I was talking to Kat about this, and she's like, it feels like it's like the, the pre-Avengers movies, where you have everybody's origin story, and then, at the, the, you know, we'll have the grand culmination where everybody comes together. And I think that's generally the plan for this series, but obviously I would definitely recommend this, especially if you're interested in Arthurian legend, but even if you're not, I think this is really great. And I also want to just mention again, the Caledon Saga is just fabulous. So if you liked this, check that out and, you know, vice versa. So had a good time with this. Highly recommend it. So the last book I'll talk about today is a four and a half star book, and that's Vida Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dychenko. So this is hard to classify. I would describe this as adult urban fantasy, but also with like horror elements. So, while on vacation, Sasha meets a mysterious man who directs her to perform a task and rewards her with these strange gold coins. Her strange mentor then instructs her to enter the Institute of Special Technologies, and it turns out this institute is more than it appears, and if students fail, their families pay a price. So honestly, I feel like it's really hard to put a synopsis on this book, and I was trying to keep it short, but like, it's just generally hard to describe this. It's a very meta reading experience. So like I said, it's hard to review because like almost you just, like I feel like you almost just need to experience it for yourself, which is interesting because that's also very much a theme of this book. So hence like the kind of meta quality to it. But while I was reading it, it felt like my mind was doing all sorts of like weird manipulations to try to understand what was going on. And this was also similar to what Sasha does when she's, you know, trying to do these assigned exercises at school. So it's like, it's just such a weird, but interesting reading experience. Like, I don't think I've ever read anything like this. I don't know if I necessarily understood what I read, but I enjoyed it way more than I anticipated. Like, I've always heard that this is just a very confusing book. I thought that it would be, I mean, obviously confusing, but also just really hard to read. And that wasn't really true. I thought this was really easy to read. And like, again, while I'm not sure I really understood anything, I feel like I kind of grasped it enough to like put it together a little bit. And just like, even though, and and I'm, I'm totally satisfied without completely understanding it, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Again, this is a really hard book to review. The pacing was pretty good overall. We do obviously start out with a summer vacation where these mysterious things start happening, and then we go through several years of this strange school. There was never really a point where I felt bored, and I definitely wanted to figure out what was going on. It definitely has this dark academia vibe. It's, you know, with, there are very real consequences for failing exams and things like that, so it's a very harsh type of magic school. And you know, this is probably some of the strangest, like, magic, I guess, that I've ever seen, but it's super interesting. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. Honestly, again, you're just gonna have to read, for, read it for yourself. So, in terms of the characters, Sasha is actually pretty likable and relatable. She tries really hard at school and likes learning, and so this felt very similar to my own behavior and experiences with school. So I, I just thought, I, I just really enjoyed following her journey. She does experience a lot of change and growth over the book, some of which isn't always good. So she's very much one of these like special types of characters, but she also does have to try really hard to fulfill this role. So I, th I feel like that's like a little bit different. Like it's not just effortless, effortless, effortlessly special. You know, she does have to work hard for it. She can be harsh, but I think she does want to help those that she really cares about. We also have, you know, Farid, who is this mysterious man who recruits her. He's pretty harsh and unlikable, but I grew to understand him and like him a lot more over the book. We have Kostya, who is one of Sasha's friends. I mostly liked him, but he makes some really bad decisions. But at the end of the day, I think he's there for Sasha. The teachers are all mysterious and harsh as well. And I know I keep saying that, but like, I feel like that's just a good descriptor for most of this book. But again, I think you find out reasons for why they're this way. And I like them a lot more because of it. 
I'm a little bit more mixed on Sasha's mom. Sometimes I liked her, but sometimes I feel like she's excluding Sasha. But yeah, so this was like, again, one of the most unique reading experiences I've ever had. Hence why, you know, I rated it four and a half stars. This is the first book in a series, and I think there's like four books or something like that. So I'd absolutely read more if more of them got translated. I think they're supposed to be in works. I thought I had seen online that they are translating more of these books, but I don't know if there's any information about release dates or anything like that. But yeah, so um, <laughs> I would I would certainly recommend this again. Like uh, it was just absolutely wild. I will say like if you're not comfortable with not understanding what you're reading necessarily, like this may not be a great fit. But like if you're willing to kind of just go along with the story and then, you know, like kind of uncover things as you go, then I think you'll be totally fine with this book. So with that, those are all the books that I have to talk to you about today. I just started an arc of Sister Song by Lucy Holland, I think, and that's that comes out at the beginning of October. It's more of like a historical fantasy, historical fiction, I'm not really sure type of thing, but uh, hopefully it seems good so far. I've read like two chapters, but I'm excited to continue that. I have a few more October arcs and review things that I want to get to, but let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. And for your question of the day, what is the most unique reading experience you've ever had with a book? So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.